The uh, presidential uh, campaign moves into high gear. It has been for a while. Uh, and, of course, our senator from the state of Florida, former presidential candidate Marco Rubio, um, they wound up with a little more than 170 delegates. What happens to those? And what about this bill in front of the uh, Senate concerning Saudi Arabia and what they role they may may have played during 9-11? We're pleased to be joined by the senator now. Good morning to you, Senator. Thanks for joining us again. Good morning, Jimmy. Good morning. Right, let's start with, uh, with with the Saudi Arabian bill because the president is there in Saudi Arabia now, and I know that uh, this is in front of uh, uh, Congress, and it's an important one. Why do you think we should hold the Saudis' feet to the fire and release those 28 pages? Well, I've reviewed the 28 pages. I'm not necessarily against releasing them. I think the problem is they have to be read in the context of other classified information, uh, which is not going to be declassified. I don't, this, that's the problem with some of this. Um, I think it, it it's not a cut-and-dry thing the way some have represented. I personally am not, at the end of the day, against it being released, other than I don't think it paints a complete picture. And look, I've I got to tell you, I've been tough on the Saudi Arabian government just two days ago. I uh, signed a letter I sent to the president, and I'm asking him to raise the issue of human rights, which in Saudi Arabia are uh, regularly violated. There's a blogger who's been sitting in jail now for over two years, was lashed publicly, almost killed from the lashing. His wife came to see us yesterday. She's now in exile, uh, living in Canada. So I've I've been very harsh on them, and, and there's no doubt. You know, the, the Saudi royal family is made up of over 10,000 princes and different people. So there's a lot of people to talk about there. But I just think it's important that if you're going to declassify it, you do so within the full context of everything that we know. Otherwise, I think it gives an incomplete picture of the truth, and, and in the end, it's the truth we're trying to arrive at here. Right. The, 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 the threat by the Saudis uh, talking about selling assets owned by the government of the United States, $750 billion, uh, were you at all, or is that not a concern at all? Well, I think they're saying that in the context of if they start getting sued, they're going to have to do that to potentially play, pay claims. But, no, I'm not a big fan of being threatened by foreign governments or being told by foreign governments uh, that they're going to do this or that against us. Um, I, I don't think that's a real threat. I'm not sure how easily they could do that. I'm not sure they can afford to do what they're talking about doing, to be honest with you. Right, absolutely. Um, let's talk a little bit about the race yesterday. First, do we know what's going to happen to your delegates that are pledged to you, Senator? Well, so it depends on each state, but... Primary, most states are going to, they're going to be required to vote for me on the first or second ballot, regardless of, depending on what the particular state rules are. Um, and that will remain the case for the majority of the states. Uh, not all, but, but each has their own interpretations, of, and each has new rules. And then there's, you know, um, obviously the, the question beyond me of what happens to a significant number, about 200 delegates, including a significant number from Pennsylvania, who aren't bound to anybody and can vote for whoever they want at right. the convention. So... Look, this is a civics education for Americans who are learning that, you know, it hasn't mattered in the past because we've had nominees that get a substantial majority of the delegates who are all bound to vote for them, whether they like them or not. But this is the way the system has been for a long time in both parties. If a primary does, and caucuses do not decide the nominee, it then goes to the convention. The Republican Party, the Democrat Party, they are private organizations who can – there's basically no invalid way of choosing your – Nominees, they could. Li I'm not advocating this, obviously, but you can just put a bunch of names in a hat and pull a name out and say, right. "This is our nominee." It's a private organization, and they have a system, and everybody knew that going in. Yeah, they did, and, and which brings us to last night in New York. Uh, Ted Cruz uh, had a rough night, uh, just about 14 percent. Uh, John Kasich at 25 percent. Of course, Donald Trump over 60 percent. He had a big night in his home state of New York. Uh, is it time for Kasich and for Cruz to think about leaving and to reunite the party under Donald Trump? Well, as a candidate, I never asked anyone to drop out, and I'm not going to do it now. I think people need to run until they feel they've run their course. I can tell you my decision was based on the fact that uh, I didn't see a path forward that wasn't divisive for the party. But I recognize what's happening here. Look, there's this, this, uh, one of the shames about this campaign is we haven't talked more deeply about what's creating all this anxiety. We have an incredible transformation in our economy. This digital economy has just gotten rid of a bunch of jobs. It's not just jobs going to China. It's jobs that don't exist anymore. Some of these jobs you can't bring back because they don't exist anymore. They're being done by machines, or you can do them now with less people. And that means we have – and that's left a lot of people in this country displaced, or they don't make what they used to make, or it's not enough. Well, that's what we need to be talking about. How do we get people retrained? How do we make America the best place in the world to create the new jobs that actually pay more than the old jobs? How do we help people acquire the skills they need for the new jobs that the new economy creates? You know, all this talk about we're just going to bring all these jobs back, well – some of those jobs just don't exist anymore. You can't bring them back because right. machines now do them, and that's been lost here. But Donald Trump has tapped into that anger and has effectively used it to you know, win primaries and elections across the country, and I thought you saw that last night 
especially when you see the results in upstate New York. Right. If 1237 is the number that uh, the candidate has to get to to be able to secure the Republican nomination, and there are polls out, many of them, and you're right, it's a civics lesson for Americans realizing this is not a one-person, one-vote deal about selecting the candidates. Do you believe that if he does not get to 1237, that it should become a more contested and open convention with the candidates, with the delegates choosing the candidate for the Republicans? Well, the delegates are going to choose the candidate. Now, some of the delegates have to vote a certain way, because right. that's the way the rules say you have to vote for whoever won your state or whoever you're assigned to. But ultimately, if the ballots go on long enough, almost every delegate will be unbound. I think the argument is that Trump is making is this game is a, just like the economy. He's saying the politics is rigged. and the, uh, Well, it's, it, I wouldn't call it rigged. I mean, these are the rules. He knew the rules or should have going in, number one. And number I, I do think it's valid to argue to delegates, look, let's not divide the party. You have someone here who has all these votes, uh, very close to get 1237. Let's not ignore the will of the people or they're going to be angry. And delegates may decide that on that reason they decide to vote for Donald Trump. But if they don't, it is not illegitimate in any way. It is, you know, th that's why we elect delegates. That's the meaning of being a delegate is choosing a nominee that can win. Final question for you, Senator. If indeed it is Donald Trump, will you support him? Yeah, I've always said I'm going to support the Republican nominee, and that's especially true now that it is apparent that Hillary Clinton is going to be the, the Democratic candidate. Uh, I, my, my differences with Donald Trump are well documented, and obviously uh, uh, we had a 12 months to talk about those, and, uh, and I'm not saying he's going to be the nominee. We don't know that yet. He's certainly the leader in the delegate count, but Hillary Clinton would be a disaster for America. Uh, she really would. I mean, she brings, uh, I think she's got a lot of ethical questions surrounding her campaign, I think she was not a very good Secretary of State, and quite frankly, she's a, a candidate that looks backwards. America needs to turn the page and move towards the future. Senator, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time this morning, as always, and the best of luck. We'll see when you come back to yep. South Florida. Yep. All right, Senator Thanks, Marco Jimmy. Rubio, everybody.